I'm pretty sure that most, if not all of us, came across this logo in our lives. Whether in awareness raising campaigns or in school. But most certainly on goods we consume on a daily basis. For example, plastic water bottles, where it's written, please recycle. Well, that's a brilliant idea. I would love to do that. But I hardly see public dustbins in Zambia. And if they are not emptied regularly. So how about I take it home? I have a waste collector who's supposed to pick up my waste once a week. But honest question, who of us in the audience actually do have a waste collector? And how reliable are they? And how often do we witness scenes like this where trash is just burnt in drainages or in backyards? And even if it's collected, it's most certainly just sent to the landfill and it won't get recycled. Unless it's getting picked by miners from low income communities who are exposed to this toxic environment. That's certainly not what I envision when I think of waste management. So why is this logo even there? To me, this is rather greenwashing than taking up corporate social responsibility. I think we should be past that stage that waste management businesses are somewhere hidden and sector workers are stigmatized because honestly, they contribute a lot to the livability of our communities and cities. And I think we should be past that stage that environmental consciousness is something for weirdos or do-gooders or a Muzungu thing because it affects all of us everywhere and every time. The logo shown on the previous slide contains way more content than it seems on the first sight. It refers to the waste management pyramid containing the four R's. But what can each of us do? Most importantly, we have to start with ourselves and rethink our behavior and lead by example. On top, we see reduction. We can easily, all of us, reduce our plastic bag usage when we go shopping in supermarkets and reuse reusable cloth bags and backpacks instead. And actually, they are sold in almost all supermarkets at all counters, but nobody is using them. But instead, most trolleys in Zambia rather look like this. Would already show a first example of material reuse. And did you know that this year the world is going to consume about 5 trillion plastic bags a year? That's more than 160,000 per second and more than 700 per person per year. So by using reusable bags, we already show the first example of material reuse. The next step, least preferable option, is recycling, which refers to the reprocessing of materials. Although the sector is still pretty small in Zambia, there are quite a number of examples of waste aggregators who collect plastic and cardboard in Ngombe, in Kalingalinga, or in Bauleni. And there are quite a handful of organizations who make innovative arts and crafts products derived from products which are perceived to be of no use, such as Sunny Foundation, what a product you see in the picture, and we're going to hear a talk later on today. The last R stands for recovery, where all of us can easily, at almost no cost, compost our own household kitchen waste and produce precious fertilizer from it. And also, waste incineration and waste to energy plants is considered as recovery, but it's least preferred because the materials are not recovered. Lastly, we have disposal, where our aim should be to reduce this fraction to a minimum because it means zero conservation of materials. After talking about the how, let's look into the why and some benefits of recycling. Recycling conserves natural resources, such as trees, water, or minerals, and preserves the environment for future generations. And it saves a lot of energy. Did you know that recycling an aluminum can reduces the energy need compared to produce a new one by more than 95%? And by that, also reducing the need for landfills because less 
material is sent to disposal facilities. What you see in the picture is actually an example from Lusaka, Chazanga compound, where aluminium cans are collected and melted in and cooking pots are produced. So there is actually something happening here, but it's somewhere in the background. Lastly, waste management has used huge potential for employment creation. We are only in North Carolina in the US, more than 17,000 people are employed directly in this sector. Let me give you some global facts about waste management. There's a World Bank report titled, What Are Wastes? which states that in 2010, the world produced about 1.3 billion tons of solid waste. Well, that's a pretty huge figure. To give you a better picture, this is equal to 180,000 40-foot shipping containers on a daily basis. Well, the biggest container ships in the world can fit up to 20,000 of these containers. So our daily waste production is not one, but nine of these huge container ships full of waste on a daily basis. And only 25% of that gets recycled or composted, and the rest just goes to the landfill. But let's have a look at, into the Zambian context. What does it mean for us? In Zambia, the same report forecasts for 2025 a waste production of 3,700 tons per day in urban Zambia. This, to use the same figure, is about two of these huge container ships in a year. But I know in Zambia we are more used to trucks and roads. This is equal to about 40,000 trucks full of waste. And if we line them up one by one, this would give us the distance from here in Lusaka all the way to Sulawesi, which is more than 600 kilometers full of waste. But only 20% of the waste in Zambia is even collected. That's why we see a lot of scenes like this in our neighborhoods, where informal dump sites are piling up and people are just throwing waste in drainages. And this is not a problem which only occurs in low-income areas. We see it basically everywhere. I would like to, you to have a look at the following picture and tell me where it's from. It's actually not from Zambia. And it's not from anywhere else in Africa. It's taken in Naples, in southern Italy. But let, let me give you an insight into this drama. Are you aware that the mafia was running the waste business in Naples for years, if not decades? And collecting, burning, dumping, or burying wastes, even radioactive waste, just in the outskirts of Naples, to an extent that entire areas are poisoned and inhabitable, to an extent that an area got the sad name, the Triangle of Death, because of its horrific rates of children born with birth defects and early cancer cases. This shows us two things. There is actually huge business potential in waste, but we also need strong authorities, regulations and enforcement to prevent such a crisis. But let's look into positive examples. I came across a newspaper article which was saying, Sweden's recycling is so revolutionary, the country has run out of rubbish. Indeed, Sweden's waste to energy centers produce enough electricity to provide 250,000 homes with electricity and 950,000 households with heating energy. That's enough energy to power the whole of Lusaka. There's another African example from Kigali in Rwanda, where a waste to energy firm treats human waste by drying it and producing precious biofuel out of it, which is sold and supplied to local manufacturing plants as coal replacement. This plant can, can treat up to 80 cubic meters of human waste on a daily basis and produce up to 500 kilograms of this renewable energy source. 
So, how do we bring trash to light? I would like you to have a short look at this flowchart in line with this year's theme, to get lost is to learn, learn the way. The key messages are simple. If this chart confuses you, I achieved what I wanted. To get lost is to learn the way. It shows that waste management is a complex, costly, and multifaceted topic which requires innovative and locally adapted solutions for every different type of waste. But by this, it also contains huge potential for businesses, individuals, and corporates. So let's learn the way. Unfortunately, at the current state, we are only dealing with the first two rows, which is waste generation, collection, and landfilling. But I would like to give you some viable and innovative business ideas, how to deal with waste management, and examples that you may not have come across in the Zambian context. For example, did you know that we can use black soldier fly larvae, the ones shown on the picture on top, to treat organic wastes? We can feed organic waste to them to produce protein-rich and calcium-rich feed for chicken. And we have a lot of organic wastes, which is by far the biggest fraction of waste in Zambia, and we have a lot of chicken, because I know Zambian bakonda and kuku. You will witness at lunchtime. <laughs> the second example is landfill gas recovery, which refers to the biogas which is extracted from the organic fraction of the waste which degrades in the landfill to produce electricity. Of course, this is more costly, but also the potential revenue is way higher. The last example is waste incineration in waste to energy plants where all of the solid waste is incinerated to produce electricity. Where waste incineration can produce way more electricity than landfill gas recovery. But it also has the disadvantages that toxic gases are released and toxic ashes remain. So it's more complex and more costly because it requires further treatment. But let's take it back home and look into the Zambian potential, electricity-wise and economically. The map you see here is a NASA worldview from Lusaka by night. And the figures I'm going to present are taken from a research paper which evaluated the electricity and economic potential of waste businesses, or particularly waste incineration in urban Africa. Let's assume this circle is the whole of Lusaka. If we would incinerate all the generated wastes in Lusaka, we could power 55,000 households, which is 15% of Lusaka's population, and generate revenues of almost $20 million a year. If we consider landfill gas recovery, we could still, with all the organic waste produced, we could still supply seven, more than 7% of Lusaka's residents with electricity and generate almost $9 million of revenue. But if we only consider the fraction which is actually collected, this figure is reduced to less than 3% of Lusaka's residents and only about $3 million of revenue generated. Which shows us that more than 60% of the potential is, is lost just because we don't collect our wastes. And we still have thoughts and mourns of load shedding in our heads. So I would like to appeal to all of you and all of us to be creative and innovative and bring trash to light. Waste management is one of the pressing challenges of this century. But it also has potential for development, businesses, and as a, a renewable energy source. I've shown example, examples what each of us can do. Reduce, reuse, recycle. And I've shown some business potential in solid waste. To all the innovative entrepreneurs with us today, let's bring trash to light and explore the potential. 
I would also like to implore our authorities to put this topic on the national agenda, to put, increase the pressure on those who pollute today what's supposed to be our children's land tomorrow. It's up to us which route we choose. I hope I was able to ignite some passion in here to bring trash to light. Thank you. Thank you.